Good morning and welcome to Trail Grazers, where we focus on great food for the trail. And that is exactly what we are going to do today. Now, our trailer is all winterized and put away for the winter. We won't take it out again until April, maybe May of next year when it's safe for us because we have, uh, we're have we we're at 5,000 feet. And so we have freezing temperatures clear up until the end of April or mid-May. And so I'm not thinking about trailer food right now, but what I am thinking about is um, we are already looking at maps for some winter car trips that we want to take down to warmer parts of the country. And on our last trailer trip, which we shared with you, that's where we took that marvelous ride with uh, Blue, our new side-by-side, -side, which we're enjoying very much. I mentioned that I had put um, frozen foods that I had prepared and put in our freezer, that I had just put them in the freezer to the trailer. And we used several meals based on those frozen foods. Well, what Jim and I discovered was we really like that. It's very, very convenient. And I have never paid much attention to organizing my freezer with meals and that sort of thing until about a month and a half ago when over on Rose Red, we started looking at um, how to level up our food storage. And uh, there are three levels, and you can go over there and check on those if you're interested. But the first level is using an integrated approach to be sure that we have 60 days worth of meals using our freezer, our refrigerator, and our pantry. And Jim and I are doing that. In fact, I'm working on a book about that right now. And so it has been a great opportunity for me to learn more and explore more about very efficient ways that we can use our freezer better than we ever have before. And I'm very excited about it. Um, we've given ourselves a goal of Thanksgiving to have our, to have our freezer organized. And we're going to report back over on Rose Red and show what we've done with our freezers in terms of, terms of organization. So when we make that video, if you're interested, I'll post a link over here so you can check it out as well. Today, we're going to make one of my favorite soups. This is called Meatball Tortellini Soup. And I've had this recipe for years and years and years. It was a family favorite when my children were growing up. Um, if you happen to have our book, 40 Plus Recipes Using Food Storage Ingredients, you have that recipe in that book. I will be putting it in the description of this video so that you can also make it. So here we have the ingredients. I have a large onion and I have some um, minced garlic. I have a large can of tomatoes, a small can of um, tomato paste, and then it calls for meatballs. Now you can either make your own meatballs or these are Costco meatballs. This is the last of a bag of Costco meatballs that I've had in the freezer for months. They were all encrusted with frost, so I rinsed them off and then thawed them and they're ready to go. Um, if you are going to freeze dry it, because this would freeze dry beautifully as well, but I would not use Costco meatballs. I would use a different recipe, even just ground beef. What we have found with these Costco meatballs and freeze drying is that they take forever, literally three days or longer to rehydrate. And even then there's a small little circle in the very center that just never gets rehydrated. So these will be great for freezing. And then um, tortellini. And Jim just picked up some fresh three cheese tortellini for us. Then I have some beef broth. Now, um, a month ago, I made something that required two cups of beef broth. So I had two cups left over and froze it. And uh, that's what we'll be using here. So that's part of my freezer organization. So we're gonna get going on this. It is a very, very easy recipe. So I'm just gonna put in about a tablespoon of oil. This is olive oil. And I'm going to drop in, this is one large onion along with some garlic. And we'll just saute these until they get transparent and we'll be back. All right, we're ready. And what we do now is we just dump everything in except for the tortellini. And so here are the tomatoes.
Here is the beef broth, which still is partly ice, but it won't be for long. Here is the tomato paste. Now it calls for a fourth of a cup of tomato paste, so what am I going to do with the rest of that tomato paste? So I'm just putting it all in. And then it calls for a cup of water. All right, and now I'm putting the spices in. This is half a teaspoon each of basil thyme oregano and a half a teaspoon of sugar, along with a teaspoon of parsley flakes. The last thing to go in is the meatballs. This is the yummiest soup. So good. Very, very filling. So what we're going to do next is simmer this for about an hour. So very gently, very low heat, just barely a simmer so the flavors can blend we are not going to put the pasta in until the end of that hour. Then I will put the pasta in and we'll cook it just until it's done. And then we're going to let it cool a little bit and then we'll bring you back. At that point in time, we will be ready to uh, put it into the freezer bags to get it ready to go in the freezer. So we will see you in probably about an hour and a half. So our soup is finished and it has been cooling for about oh, half an hour or so. The tortellini is done. It's a nice, thick, hearty soup, and we're gonna get it in the bags here in just a second. So this is how things are going to work with us on our, uh, when we go on our road trips. We think we're planning that they're going to be about um, three days, either two or three nights on the road in a hotel, because we're not gonna tent camp in the winter time and our trailer is winterized and won't go with us until spring. And so in my freezer, Part of our organization is organizing this little bin with meals. Um, this is some ragu. Oh my gosh, this was so good. This has um, butternut squash in it. I have two of those. I have one of just regular beef stew and one of pot roast that has meat and carrots and gravy in it. And so I'm gonna do two of these soups and they will go in here as well when after they freeze. And then this just stands up in the freezer. This is such an um, economical, a space efficient way of organizing our meals. And when things are frozen flat like this, look how thin they are. These will thaw right away. I mean, I, we have a sunny windowsill over here. I put it in the sun, and within just a few minutes, these are ready to go into whatever container I'm going to use to heat them up, or even I can just leave them in here to microwave. On the road, what we will do is on the morning that we leave on one of our three-day trips, I will have planned a menu. I always plan menus, and we've just done a class over on Rose Red Homestead on meal planning. And in fact, I used our whole example of our last trailer trip for this channel as an example on that class. I'm gonna put the card for that right up here in case anyone is interested. There's a download that has our menu for what we did on that camping trip. Um, so we will just, according to whatever I have decided to take for our meals, I will just take these frozen slabs of meals and we have either an ice chest cooler or we have our little electric refrigerator that runs off of um, Baby Blue that we just keep right in the back seat. Baby Blue is our solar generator and um, we can charge it up with regular wall outlet in our hotel room or even in our car there's an outlet for us to charge it up. But it will run that refrigerator all day, all night. And so by the time we get ready to eat these, they will be thawed. And then if, if we are on the road when we're going to be eating, we will be taking our 
little uh, car oven with us that also plugs into the Blue Eddy. And we will have warm meals either for lunch or for dinner or even for breakfast because I have, um, I have breakfast meals also frozen and ready to go. Now, if we were to take a trip that is longer than three days, then I probably would do a mixture of taking frozen meals as well as freeze-dried meals. So that's kind of our plan. And we'll have you along with us as we are executing the plan when we do some of our road trips. So for now, I'm gonna set this aside. I am going to package about three cups of this soup per bag. And they were, of course, heaping. You notice that, I'm sure. And then what I do is I lay it down flat like this. And we want that air out. And I want to slide it up so it's just a very thin layer. The meatballs are going to poke up, of course. And then when I've gotten it to the top, I will just go ahead and ziplock it. And then we're going to lay it right here. And then this will go out in the freezer and freeze flat like this, and then I'll just put them in that, the, this, I'll file them over here in this bin. So we're gonna get two ready. And doing it this way allows me to keep this lip up here clean so that I'm not working with any, although sometimes it backfires. Okay, so straighten this out, getting the air out. And I've got too much air in there. All right, these will go out to the freezer and freeze flat. The rest of this, Jim and I will enjoy in just a few minutes for our lunch. So this turned out really, really well. This also freeze dries really well, but again, that reminder not to do Costco meatballs. Or, I, would not, I will not do meatballs uh, when I freeze dry it. The com meat that is compacted real hard like meatballs just doesn't rehydrate very well for me. So I'll probably just do loose hamburger. Uh, maybe I will flavor that hamburger with some breadcrumbs and some Parmesan cheese or something like I would with regular meatballs. And then we will, um, we can freeze dry it. So you can do it either way, but I'm really looking forward to having a couple of these um, meatball tortellini soup meals ready in our freezer that we can just grab, thaw, heat, and eat. So I hope this has given you some ideas that you may not have thought of before. Um, we're going to really enjoy our time on the road coming up this winter and are looking forward to having you come with us. So thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you out there on the trail.